Hello, my name is David Golub. I'm a platform architect with Microsoft. And welcome to part two of spatial intelligence and reporting using the National Highway and San Francisco 311 data set. So in part two, we will begin constructing our reporting services report. Uh, and we'll do it in the context of a business problem. In our business problem, the city manager of San Francisco wants to start uh, an ambitious and a systematic plan to clean up graffiti, abandoned vehicles, and other eyesores as reported by the citizens through the San Francisco 311 system. Further, uh, the city manager wants an email in their inbox every Monday morning that has a PDF attachment showing open 311 incidents declining, and for those that are open, um, fewer hours between time open and, and uh, the time that they're closed. So before we look at the underlying data set that would drive the results to satisfy uh, that kind of a uh, report, let's look at the report again, like we did in part one. Let's look at the report in the context of that scenario. So the city manager uh, indicates that they're interested in starting this ambitious initiative uh, on Geary Avenue. So uh, they would like to, to draw a 200 meter buffer around Geary Avenue and then clean up all the 311 incidents that result. And we'll start with the longest road segment on Geary Boulevard. Uh, and at this point, we will go ahead and select all of the 311 incidents that are within that 200 meter buffer on that road segment. We'll click apply. And And here we go. So here's the 200 meter road buffer. And here are all of the 311 incidents. Here's a street and sidewalk cleaning request that's been open for 111 hours. Uh, over here is another street and sidewalk cleaning request. A graffiti on public property that's been open for 76 hours, uh, etc. So from reporting services report, uh, this happens to be reporting services that's uh, integrated with SharePoint, um, rendering a report from within SharePoint, we can, we can come up here to this actions drop down, and uh, the viewer of the report, if they have sufficient privilege, they can subscribe to the report, and they can indicate a calendar uh, with which they'd like this report put in their inbox, and then maybe an export type. I'd like this very report with these parameters in my inbox in a PDF format. And that fits our scenario. So let's now build this report. Well, we need to start with the data that's surfaced to build that, uh, to create that visualization. Here's the query. And notice how I have this already primed with Geary Boulevard, the road segment, the 200 meter buffer, status open. I'm not even looking at the 311 types because we're asking for all the types. But if I perform this query, you can see that I get uh, uh, eight rows back. Now, we want to actually parameterize the buffer size, the roadway, the road segment, and the 311 types, as you saw as I navigated that report. So uh, obviously, uh, Management Studio doesn't know what at and then uh, some string represents, but this is kind of my cheat sheet. When I paste these into the report authoring tool, uh, the report authoring tool, Report Builder, it will know what to do with these query parameters. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And now I'm going to come back to my... Um, to my SharePoint document library. I'm going to go to documents, new document. I'll come down here to report builder report. Okay, now we're in the report builder tool and we'll choose a blank report. 
create a new data set. And we'll go ahead and embed that. And then a new data source. We'll point that at the San Francisco 311 database. There we go. And in our query editor window, we'll just go ahead and paste that query. Certainly, you can use the query designer, which is a graphical user interface, and then you can uh, click tables and columns. It will create the joins. But in our case, we're just going to grab the queries uh, that I've uh, pre-supplied in, uh, uh, in that uh, script that you just saw. And now I will uh, indicate status equals open and click OK. So let's look what happened. Uh, wherever those uh, at symbol and then variable names were, uh, the report builder, uh, report authoring tool automatically created some report parameters for those. If I run the report now, you can see they're just, they're just free text um, uh, report parameters. They're not uh, very useful to us. Um, what will make them useful is, is if I uh, make them data driven. So for roadway, I want to provide the actual roads in San Francisco. And then um, uh, once a roadway is selected, uh, I'd like uh, to see the road segments for that road that was selected. And then finally, once road and road segment is selected, show the 311 types that are within the buffer that was defined. So first, let's go to buffer size and set the uh, data type properly. It's an integer. Let's give it a default value of 100 meters. And for roadway, we need to create another data set that will surface the roadways and then bind that to that report parameter. So here's the select statement. Come back to Report Builder. Add data set. SF roadway. It's embedded. We'll use that data source and paste that right there. So now we have the San Francisco road names surface through the data set SF roadway. We'll do the parameter properties for roadway and available values. Get the values from a query and we point it at the SF roadway data set. And the value and the label are the same. Click OK. Now if we run, we can see, sure enough, the roadway report parameter now has the available roads in San Francisco. So going back, now we need to uh, bind the uh, San Francisco uh, road segments to roadway. So let's do that. And sure enough, I have another query here. And in this case, the query returns road name, a nice readable mile post column, and then the internal ID for the road segment sequence. But look at the where clause. The where clause is driven by the report parameter roadway. Come back to the report authoring tool, report builder, new data set, SF road segment. There we go. What do we need, need to do now? We need to go to the road segment report parameter and bind that to the SF road segment uh, data set. The value field in this case is the road segment sequence, and that will uh, be joined to the SF311 data, data set. And the nice readable uh, uh, column will be the one that's uh, uh, named milepost. That'll be the label field. And now if I run the report. Look at how road segment is grayed out. That's because we can't execute that query until we supply the roadway. That's called a hierarchical report parameter. So now if I choose uh, Geary Boulevard, there you go. Now we see the road segments associated with Geary Boulevard. 
What's the final step? Well, we have our buffer size, we have our roadway, we have our road segment supplying all of those parameters. We can then run the spatial query that will return the San Francisco 311 incidents within that buffer. And we'll come over here. And sure enough, you can see in the where clause, depends on roadway, depends on buffer size, depends on road segment. Come over here, add data set, SF311 types. And we will now, now look at this, uh, allow multiple values because uh, recall that for that particular parameter, uh, we're allowing the uh, user of that report to choose the specific 311 types they're interested in. And available values, get values from a query, 311 type, and the value field and label field are the same. And for the prompt, maybe just make it a little nicer like this. And then once again, we'll run the query. Now you see road segment and San Francisco 311 types uh, uh, grayed out. We choose Geary Boulevard. We choose the longest road segment, 1.36 miles long. Um, and then uh, here are the different types. These are the 311 types that are uh, have been uh, reported within that 100 meter buffer around that road segment. So now let's uh, test our data values. We'll just go ahead and we'll insert a table here. I'll add a couple columns to the right. And for the San Francisco 311 data set, uh, let's go ahead and get the, uh, the type. And how about the primary street the type was recorded on? Uh, maybe the uh, police district, um, duration and hours. The status should be open, right? Because in the where clause, I indicated status equals open. So now when I execute this report, 200 meter buffer, the original requirement, Geary Avenue, Boulevard, the longest mile uh, uh, road segment. And then we're going to go ahead and clean up all of those 311 incidents and do report. And there we go. Here are those eight 311 incidents that uh, I displayed in a much more attractive uh, map report region at the beginning of our session. This concludes part two. Part three, we will actually take this data set and we will create that, uh, that really nice map. Thank you very much.